In this video, we will continue our series on security in AWS and configure AWS site-to-site -site VPN to our on-prem firewall, in this case, an on-prem PFSense firewall. In a previous video, I configured PFSense firewall so that all inbound and outbound traffic to your AWS resources transits the PFSense firewall. You can find the link in the description down below. In this video, we will take it in another direction and configure AWS site-to-site -site VPN managed service to our on-prem PFSense firewall. This is a common setup when resources in AWS are only allowed access from a corporate office. The corporate office has one or more hardware-based firewalls in the data center and one or more VPN connections back to the AWS cloud. AWS is simply considered an extension of the corporate data center and there is no public access to these resources. Creating a site-to-site -site VPN on AWS is a three-step process. We create a customer gateway, create a virtual private gateway, and three, configure a site-to-site -site VPN connection. Here is our on-prem PFSense firewall, which has no IPsec VPN tunnels set up. For now, we just need the external IP address of this firewall. In the AWS console and the VPC dashboard, we have to create a customer gateway. We give it a descriptive name. Choose static routing, and here is where we put the external IP address of the on-prem firewall. The other two fields are optional. Click Create Customer Gateway. Next step is to create a virtual private gateway. We just need to provide a name. I will call this pfsense-vpg. For ASN, we will leave it at default. If you are unfamiliar with BGP, chances are you will also pick the default. Click Create Virtual Private Gateway. Then we attach this VPG to the VPC. In this case, I have already created a custom VPC called PFSense-California. If you need help creating a new VPC, please watch the previous videos. For any of these steps, please ensure that the state changes to a green color statement. In this case, a green attached state. Now comes the fun part. We start configuring the AWS side of the VPN connection. We need to do this first because AWS will provide a very detailed configuration script for our specific hardware firewall. We give it a descriptive name. I choose the descriptive name site to site to corp pfsense. Select the VPG we configured earlier and the customer gateway ID. We'll select static routing for this tutorial. Everything else can stay at the default settings. We wait until the state changes to active. Take your time and take a look at all the details. You can also see that AWS has automatically configured two tunnels for us. AWS requires that we create two tunnels on our end in order to provide redundancy. Let's download the configuration. AWS provides the configuration for many third-party firewalls. We select PFSense and then download the configuration. The configuration file seems quite extensive, but it really isn't. If you take it step by step, you will see that it is rather easy to configure. AWS is just very thorough and even provides some theoretical information on how IPsec tunnels work. To a certain extent, they explain phase one and phase two and higher security protocols. As you saw in the previous video, First, we configure phase one, which involves adding the remote gateway IP address, authentication method, negotiation mode, my identifier, which is the external IP address of our PFSense firewall, and the pre-shared key. The rest can stay as is. 
Now keep in mind that company policy may require that you select more secure protocols for both phase one and phase two. This is just the bare minimum. Compare your PFSense configuration with the configuration file once again and then save. Configure phase two with the settings in the configuration file. We input our local network as a LAN subnet and then add the remote subnet. Once again, bare minimum to get the tunnels up and running. There are higher encryption protocols that you can use and routing can be as simple or as complex as you need. Keep in mind that your hardware also has to meet certain requirements to support more complex designs and protocols. Check the status of your VPN tunnels. Keep refreshing until you see a status of established. If this doesn't change, then you might have missed a step and need to go back and make sure that you configure it exactly as instructed in the configuration file. In the AWS dashboard, we now see that Tunnel 1 status is up. Let's repeat the process for Tunnel number 2. Follow the steps in the configuration file. With PFSense, I'll take a shortcut here by copying Tunnel 1 and just changing the remote gateway, the description, and the pre-shared key. If you have learned something, please buy me a coffee. Create a phase two for this tunnel. Check the status of your VPN tunnels. Keep refreshing until you see a status of establish. If this doesn't change, once again, you might have missed a step and need to go back and make sure that you configured exactly as instructed in the configuration file. VPNs can be a very complex topics because of all the encryption protocols available. What once used to be a secure protocol may now be on the not recommended list. There is so much to consider. Security associations, IPsec key management, IPsec security protocols, IPsec tunnel negotiation. You will hear of terms such as Diffie-Hellman, authentication header or AH, encapsulating security protocol or ESP, IPsec tunnel negotiation, IKE, etc. I suggest you get some strong coffee and buy me one too and read some white papers on these topics. In the AWS dashboard, we now see that tunnels one and two status are up. Routing can also be very difficult if you don't understand the core concepts. In the future, I will create a few videos on routing and routing protocols. If you have learned something, please buy me a coffee. Click on the buy me a coffee link in the description down below.